Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Cinderella. It's Disney's live action adaptation that's based on a classic fairy tale by Charles Perrot, which in turn was based on the 1950s animated classic. It stars Lily James, Elise Webb, Kate Blanchett, Richard Madden, Helen Bodoham Carter, Sophie Machera, Holiday Granger, Nonso Osnanzi, Derek Jacoby, Stellan Skarsgård, Heli Adwell, and Ben Chaplin. It's written by Quitz Whites, who's also the director of the movie The Golden Compass, and it's directed by Shakespearean actor and director Kenneth Branagh, who did Henry V, Mary Sherry's Frankenstein, and of course, Four from 2011. Yeah, based on the Marvel comic book. The movie begins when a young girl named Ella, who wants up living with her wealthy parents in a beautiful estate in a peaceful kingdom, her mother had taught Ella. How to believe in the existence of magic, including making contact and be friends with many animals, yeah, as well as the, the mice themselves. <laughs> Things were going pretty well for Ella and her family until suddenly her mother winds up suffering an illness and dies after she made a promise to her to show kindness and courage. Years later, as she became a teenager, was now played by Lily James, which suddenly her father, who's played by Ben Chaplin, um, once of meeting the widow of a Creighton's named Lady Tremaine, who's played by Kate Blanchett, along with her two stepdaughters, Drusilla and Anastasia, both played by Sophie McShera and Holiday Granger. Soon, Ella had welcomed her stepfamily, despite of their unpleasant attitudes that the stepsisters had, and tries to protect her mouse friends from the cat named Lucifer, yeah, that black cat <laughs> that Lady Tremaine has. But soon after, Ella's father winds up on a business trip, promising the stepsisters some gifts. Yeah, which apparently winds up um, becoming even a bigger problem was when Lady Tremaine winds up um, showing her true identity of becoming very cold-hearted, cruel, and jealous. She winds up sending Ella to stay on top of the attic while the stepsisters take over her room. Yeah. So that means, you know, all this time, you know, things are just going to go simply as planned. That is until she overheard that her father had passed away due to an illness that he had. Which leaves Lady Tremaine desperate for money that she actually fires the entire servants and hired Ella to do all the work around the house. You know, leaving the Steph family, eating all breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all this other stuff, and and of course just leaving Ella all alone, yeah, including her attic. Yeah, which then one cold evening, she winds up staying downstairs into the fireplace just to keep her warm. Yeah. But as the morning comes, she woke up. Almost forgot her breakfast to the step family, and then you know they wound up eating, you know, just cleaning up, and then they started tautening and teasing her, and actually calling her as we speak Cinderella. Ella winds up um, going for a ride into the woods, where he winds up encountering a hunting party, which she actually meets, what seems to be, you guessed it. Prince Charming named Kit, who's played by Richard Madden. Of course, Kit winds up being enchanted by her 
charm, kindness, and unique look of, of the outdoor life. You know, she, he became very infatuated with her, you know, just making all these conversations and all that while riding on the horse. Yeah. Only to discover that, um, that he only has a few days left before the ball arrives, which the king offered the kid to actually marry the bride. Which apparently he wanted to at first, but then suddenly, you know, he just couldn't get over the girl that he just met in the woods. Yeah, very mysterious. He actually persuaded her father's choice by not being able to marry the bride. And once the ball had arrived, the Tremaine family wants to be very ecstatic by being proposing to marriage and warranty which unfortunately you know they couldn't afford uh, Ella a new dress so at this rate Ella wants to wearing her mother's dress which was pink but when things were getting out of the way you know during that one particular night they wound up ripping her dress up completely along with the stepdaughters and they decided not to let her attend at the ball so yeah they all left while Ella wants up all alone in the house, while he went, she went straight down to the garden in tears. Until suddenly, she meets an old woman who claims to be, as we speak, a fairy godmother. Yep, who's who's played by Helen Butterham Carter. As Ella gave her um, a drink of water. She wants to transform into her true self using all of her magic to, to actually uh, turn a pumpkin into a magnificent carriage, four mice into sh horses, two lizards into footmen, and a goose into a coachman. She then transforms um, Ella's mother's dress into a gorgeous blue gown. Yeah, that's very magic but complete with delicate pairs of glass slippers before sending her on her way to the ball only leaving her with one warning that the spell will only last until midnight so once Ella finally arrived to the ball you know, Kit finally discovered her and offered her their first dance so, so they basically spent all day dancing until until Kit wants up revealing his true identity with her, so they went. So you know, even you know, <laughs> while you know dismissing the Grand Dukes who who secretly promised Kit to to a specific princess, you know, to, to marry and dance. Yeah, he wants up touring Ella the entire palace and wants up straight into the secret garden, where you actually see. Uh, a huge swing that she wants up riding on. So, so things were just going pretty well for her until all of a sudden the clock had struck almost up to midnight and the fact that she had to go real fast because because you know you know what's gonna happen. She needs to race through time into the magnificent carriage so that way, that way the magic doesn't disappear by the moment this actually happens. So of course she wants to race in against time while one of her glass slippers fell into the stairs while Kit is actually chasing her around yeah, and then also wound up having all the guards and all the rest chasing her all the way while the carriage and the rest of the the crew winds up transforming back to their usual selves so and then when it rained you know, things were just going great so so now she finally gets to go back home you know pretending like all of this had never happened she actually took one glass slipper and, and hid it inside the attic you know just to keep it safe so yeah it was definitely the best night that she ever had but then all of a sudden the king actually dies only leaving Kit uh, before giving the permission to actually find the girl and marries her as he wishes so once Kit becomes Cain, 
he announced that every maiden in the entire kingdom to actually try it on the glass slipper. Yeah, which none of them fit at all. <laughs> Ella wants to actually go into her the attic just to find you know, the other slipper. Which all of a sudden Lady Tremaine actually took it from her and smashed it. And then after that, she locked her inside the attic. Yeah, with nowhere else to go. Yeah, already being captured. Suddenly the mice wants up opening the glass window. Yeah, well, you know, the guards, uh, the Grand Duke, and all the rest are still searching for the girl that that kid had met. Suddenly, you know, they run up um, into the house, you know, where Lady Tremaine, you know, discovered them and talking about, what, about what's going on. That is until, yeah, only pretending that, yeah, basically just trying the, the same slipper, yeah, not which the stepsisters had tried and unfortunately they both never fit at all <laughs> so that is until they heard uh, Ella singing Lavender's Blue you know, through the window that the mice had opened so the Grand Duke tried to leave but only Kid actually reveals himself as in demand to investigate the actual sound that he just heard so once Ella was found Lady Tremaine had forbidden her not to go downstairs. Yeah. But of course, it was overruled by the captain. And Ella told uh, Lady Tremaine that, that she would not you know, stay up there. That she's never been her mother and all that. Yeah, whatever. Well, she finally went down and meet Kit as they finally reunited. Kid actually recognized Ella, yeah, even with one shoe, and X, which actually fits perfectly. Then she finally reveals her name, which is of course Ella and Cinderella. The stepsisters pleaded for forgiveness, including Lady Tremaine, which Ella forgave her. She left the kingdom, put her daughters in the Grand Duke. And then sooner or later, after the wedding starts, Kid and Ella had crowned as new king and queen. And of course, as we speak, they live happily ever after. The end. And without a doubt, this is the best adaptation that Disney had to offer. And I think it's definitely right up there with the 1950 animated classic as well as Ever After a Cinderella Story, you know, the one with Drew Barrymore, you know, which I really love. I mean, that was one of my favorite adaptations. This was definitely well made. I mean, with all the special effects that they put into it, all the CGI effects and everything, it was perfect. I mean, definitely what they need to have. And Because I, I know Disney wants to come up with more live-action adaptations of fairy tales and all that, and all these other movies that they come up with. So this was definitely perfect. And Lily James did an awesome job playing the role of Ella. You know, I think this is definitely perfect because she definitely shows you know, courage and kindness and everything that she, that her mother promised in the movie. And, and Lily James definitely did a tr true uh, Cinderella that I never thought I would see. Even though this one was different. Yeah. And I also love the cast in the movie. You know, I, I thought Kate Blanchett did a great job playing, you know, the villain, Lady Tremaine. You know, definitely the the wicked stepmother <laughs> that was the widow of the acquaintance. Yeah, definitely suits it well. You know, they had a lot of, they started wearing a lot of great dresses, you know, as the film went along. The two stepsisters, of course, <laughs> you know, by the two actresses, you know, they did a great job as well. I love them. I mean, it, it's just very unique the way the film was done, you know, as a fairy tale classic. And I also love Helen Bonham Carter as the fairy godmother. I thought she did a great job, you know, playing that role perfectly. Yeah, you because know, it's just like, because then again, you never know how many fairy godmothers you have to choose for the film. So it worked. 
Um, it, it was perfect. I mean, this is definitely what Disney had to offer. Yeah, I knew this was going to earn something, and and I knew uh, Kenneth Branagh wanted to do an adaptation this uh, beautiful and done in that sort of way. So I knew this was going for it. I mean, it's definitely what it was. I mean, it's the kind of fairy tale you really love, even if you're familiar with it many times. <laughs> yeah. But it had a good cast. So I really enjoy that. And uh, just so you know, though, this movie also played with a short film called Frozen Fever, you know, before the film aired. And I gotta say, it was actually very cute. I mean, it's I'm quite different from the the movie itself. I mean, they basically had a song that sort of uh, resembles to the two songs, Let It Go and For the First Time in Forever. Yeah, with Anna and Elsa, you know, just you know, setting up, of course, because, you know, Elsa already had a fever. And the fact that she started sneezing and, 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 and reveals all these mini snowmen. That, <laughs> yeah, lots of them. Well, you know, while well, Elsa is basically setting up along with Kristoff and Olaf um, a surprise party for Anna. Yeah. So that was cute. Um, and it worked. I mean, we already know that there's going to be, you know, there might be a sequel to this movie. And hopefully if that happens, who knows? I'm just hoping it doesn't end up... Uh, running out of ideas you know after the first movie I mean because I almost felt like they were s almost running out of a little idea on on the the short film but otherwise I'm, I'm okay with it it was cute so anyway um, Cinderella definitely worth watching um, if you get a chance uh, they're still playing in feeders um, you should definitely see it for yourself I mean especially if you love all the other adaptations that follow, yeah. Then this is this is a treat. I recommend it. So anyway, I give Cinderella, 2015 film, from Disney, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.